Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. I know I've said it a lot. We've, we've got one of our favorites on. We do. Mm-hmm. Dan, Dan Cummins is one of my favorite human beings on this planet. He's, he's always been one of my favorite stand-up comedians. I've been watching him since his first uh, Comedy Central Presents came out. I think that was 2008. Man, like that. As he, he's been in it that long, yeah. yeah. Um, but his podcast, look, Time Suck, is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, it examines something true that happened in the world. Lots of serial killers, yeah. weird shit, cults, things like that. It's great, and it's super intricate and uh, really well-researched, and it's just three hours of magic every, every single time he drops mm-hmm. one. I'm a big fan of, uh, of him and his, his wife as well. They've got a new show called Scared to Death, and uh, he is on the show here in a moment. But first, we got some sponsors to pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off, D'Anthony. Mm-hmm. Everything is 25% off at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. If you got that stimulus <laughs> check and you're uh, looking to quarantine in comfort, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. That is 25% off of everything. The adjustable bases, mattresses, pillows, sheets, you name it. Everything is 25% off. And as always, their 36-month pay-as-you-go program is applicable uh, for this whole shit. Uh, so get on it and use it. Uh, next yep. up, we've got DukeCannon.com. Whew. My faves. I like how they named their body wash just thick. Thick. That's it, dude. There it is. Boom. Yep. Popping it up in front of your gullet. Uh, this is the very, very best body wash in the biz. Mm-hmm. And uh, it smells delightful, by it's the way. It's very good. Veteran owned. Um, it's got a high viscosity to it. You only need like a dime size of that to wa- wash your whole fucking bee hole out. Uh, it's nice. They didn't have a promo code up the other day, and they need to. Uh, it's back now. It's back now? now? Yeah, yeah, it is. Goddamn right it is. <laughs> uh, promo code Drinking Bros for, what is it, 15%, 20% off there? You know what? I don't know. You getting the big boy totals there? Let's see. So this is, while you're looking, this is one of those products where you guys actually hit us up and you were like, hey, man, we all use Duke Cannon. We love Duke Cannon. It's a veteran-owned company, and uh, they always give back a certain percent at the end of the year of their proceeds to other veteran charities and stuff like that. So... Um, we reached out to them. And we were like, hey, man, I think this would be a great fit if you guys are down for it. And they were like, fuck yeah, man. Uh, so they're on, dude. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nine bucks for one of these things, but they're massive. Like, yeah. this is a huge tub of shit. I think you can get all four. There's four different uh, scents for 30 bucks, and it, they last forever. Um, and yeah, and the code gets you 15% off. 15% plus off, yeah. free shipping. Free shipping yeah. On uh, orders over 35 bucks. So they have a lot of different products. This is. I mean, I, I use uh, Naval Supremacy body mm-hmm. wash, and it smells really good. You ja- as soon as this came in, you jacked it. Yeah, because I already used it. Yeah. Um, so look, man, Duke Cannon is the best in the game at this. We are lucky to have them on. Uh, it was really awesome that they agreed to do it, and uh, and you guys have asked more importantly. So uh, it's DukeCannon.com promo code Drinking Bros, fifteen percent off and free shipping at Duke Cannon. Uh, last but not least, we've got Raycon. Raycon headphones. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Somebody asked me, in, uh, I think on Facebook the other day, if you could pair it to your computer. You can pair it to anything that has Bluetooth. Anything, yeah. Um, yep. Best it'll, wireless in the biz. Yeah, it'll last a long time. It, it just recharges in a, in a little tiny box, and uh, you're good to go. This shit lasts for six hours now. Mm-hmm. Um, price went up about eight bucks or something like that. Look, with the, uh, the URL, buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros, uh, you get 15% off, knocks these uh, headphones down to 65 bucks. The quality is unbelievable. Uh, the sound is the best there is. And uh, in, in the wireless game, I don't know anybody that's, that's really ahead of these guys, mm-hmm. unless you want to pay fucking $9,000 for a pair of headphones. But that ain't my world, Holmes. No. Uh, not at all. Um, these are the ones you see in airports when, the, when that used to be a thing, when we used to fly and see people in public. You can still fly. There's a couple of flights every day. Yeah, yeah you can. Um, but there, it is a ghost town. It's weird. Out there. It's, it's actually weird. amazing. Yeah, if you're flying right now, it's yeah. amazing. Um, I haven't had anywhere to fly to. so I've... I'm going to fly somewhere just to go. <laughs> you should. Want to get away? Yeah. <laughs> because I, 
I mean, we've all dreamed of being on an empty airplane. Yeah, now's your chance. And they have to, because of social distancing rules, there's only, there aren't a whole lot of tickets available for each flight. Yep. Uh, which is not great for airlines because they're still super cheap. Like, you can fly to San Antonio for like 130 bucks right now. Oh, yeah, dude. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, and gas. Gas is real cheap these days, too, man. I well, filled up my entire truck for $32. I'm pretty year. sure the oil market crashed today. It did, yeah. That's what I heard. It went down 80% or something mm-hmm. crazy. Um, and then OPEC you passed that other thing last week where they agreed, agreed to uh, stop producing gallons of oil. Didn't help. Um, but uh, Raycon will help you out for your listening pleasures. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself a fine pair of wireless headphones that are affordable, loud as shit, and, uh, and last for six hours. Uh, D'Anthony, mm-hmm. let's get into the show with Mr. Dan Cummins, shall we? And uh, ready to rock, dude. Sweet. You ready, Dan? I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, sorry, uh, wrong Dan. Yeah, wrong Dan. Wrong it Dan. Doesn't <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't sell cars, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. We got one of our favorites back on the show. One of the best in the business doing it in podcasts, in my opinion, uh, Mr. Dan Cummins, oh, welcome, buddy. Where are you? You're very nice. I uh, well, I'm not. I'm not selling cars, so life's okay. I'm in Coeur d'Alene, <laughs> Idaho. I'm quarantined Yo, right. in Idaho. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It it's is. beautiful. It's yeah, beautiful you're not here. you're not selling cars, but uh, Dan, our own Dan, <laughs> before we came on the show, was doing some research on you. <laughs> yeah, and all of the Dan Cummins dot com dot net dot uh-huh. everything is owned by a chevrolet buick dealer in the great state of kentucky that's right in particular paris kentucky just outside of lexington there was a paris get yourself to Is paris really? for a dan cummins deal <laughs> yeah it's uh they've been they've been going strong for a long time i i remember when i did a sh- uh, shows in lexington years ago I, all of my radio time was dedicated to challenging him to a cage match fight to the death <laughs> and I, I was going to highlander i was like there can only be one dan cummins and he uh, never responded. He never reached out. No, not once. No, and, and all of my social media handles, everything have been jacked up because they've been around for a long time. So, it, like, since before I got into comedy. So when I tried to get a website, when I tried to get, you know, Instagram, yep. all of that, all of, you know, Dan Cummins on, like, every platform was taken by <clears throat> that car dealership. And uh, oh, well, he's the now worst. they're now Dan Cummins Chevy on Instagram. If oh, they, 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 they hard, changed hard. up. Dang it. So after they ruined mine, yeah. now they changed it. <laughs> yeah, you, you may be able to go back and get it now, but uh, it's still they still have DanCummins.com. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. When somebody gets your shit, that's what happened to me. Yeah. So Ross Patterson was taken off of everything. Yeah, I was super late to social media and all that shit. And by the time I went, um, like eighty different variations of it were gone. <laughs> right, right. The real Ross Patterson. The you know oh my everybody's God, yeah. got something before the only Ross Patterson. <laughs> Um, you know the celebrity Ross, but all that shit was taken, so I had to go with like a character name from a movie. So and who? And who, who so just, who is the main? Who is this other Ross Patterson? Take is just a variety of other Ross Pattersons, or is there some child, like yeah? Kid one actor? was a child in London with a with a dog. And, oh my god! Uh, that was it. So one of them was just a dog named Ross ah. Patterson, and they had a an account <laughs> set up for their dog and they were just posting dog pictures yeah and i s- i sent a bunch of uh, letter mail to them saying that i hope they and the dog die but <laughs> i haven't i haven't heard back so i don't know what the deal I, is with i them. had fun i had fun one time with uh the mix up with my name uh i wish this would have happened more often but but somebody reached out on facebook and this is probably like four or five years ago reached out to me uh thinking that i was running the facebook account for dan cummins chevrolet in Kentucky, and he, and he wanted a specific like Silverado. He wanted like I don't know, like a like a 2012 Silverado. And I just sent him the most ridiculous stuff. I was like, Hell yeah, we got that. I'm like, If you can be in the lot in 45 minutes, I'll give it to you for six thousand cash, no trade ins. <laughs> like, like, like this. I, and I just imagine this dude showing up like, ah, Where's my 2012 Silverado? Six grand. They're like, What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. At least yours is something sweet, though. Like, uh, like this. At least you can make fun of it. Yeah. I can't make fun of a fourteen-year-old kid living in London. You know, <clears throat> just pale and pasty and all that shit. I, like, I can. You can. <laughs> yeah. did, did anybody else have your shit? No. 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 So, my name is. Uh, my last name is right. spelled wrong. Yeah. Like it's. My, my family fucked it up sometime in the early 20th century, I think, or yeah. late 19th, one of the two. So Holloway is yeah. H-O-L-L-A-W-A-Y. So, like, nobody, nobody's got that. Yep. It's just Perfect. A, a, a mis, 
misspelling of a name. So you're good. You were able to get all your shit, weren't you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get one goddamn thing. And it was to the point where there was a go-between. And I don't know if you had one of these in Hollywood where they were like, hey, we will negotiate on your behalf for all of your uh, oh, Instagram yeah, handles, yeah. Twitter, all that no, stuff. No, I never went that route. So I did. Uh, and and uh, one person was just like, no, this is my name. And I had it first or whatever. And I was like, well, no, you're 14. And, you know. Right. Um, but I under I understood sure, it. Sure, sure. Where it was just like, hey, man, that, that's. I'm sure it's somewhat of a common name around the world, <laughs> and it is what it is, right? I, w- I would just like to see you standing over this child, like, uh, like, uh, what's his nuts in Friday, standing over like Debo, Debo, oh, Debo. Yeah, D- yeah, Debo, yeah. 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 It's like who's Ross Patterson now? Just keep yelling into his face, yeah. And spit in his face and walk away. Man, you just and, got to the it, fuck out just after knocking this. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's British too, so he'll just apologize for by the real the Ross thing. Patterson. You yeah. just got knocked out by. Yeah. But I wonder that all the time because there's. I was watching the Michael Jordan doc last night, The Last Dance. Oh yeah, they've been pushing that hard on ESPN since they have no games. Real to talk hard. About. The, the ratings destroyed. And look, there's nothing original content wise out right now. Right. So everybody was kind of waiting for that thing and. Uh, there was a, an old Ohio State Buckeye player named Michael Jordan as well. And he said, I'm the, the real Michael Jordan. It was like, man, that name is so common. Yeah. Um, I played with a, a white Michael Jordan oh my in God. Little League. Yes. White Middle League kid. Clearly was born you know, before Michael sure. Jordan exploded and all that other shit. And uh, to live with that name the rest of your life as a white kid is, yeah. has got to be the fucking worst. Especially, worst. especially if you want to be about, like, if you're like an okay basketball player. And, and yeah. just like like every pickup game, every <laughs> fucking new team, you're just getting harassed. There's yeah, oh my god, yeah, because nobody nobody There's wants to be one... the second best Michael Jordan. Mm-mm. No, and and look, it takes something. You have to do something magnificent in the world right. to overcome a name like that. You have to cure AIDS. So I look at that. Yeah, like <laughs> well, the, I guess, the or, or, or the some, cancer or, or disease or that hasn't get, been cured. Cancer. Or yeah, or you yeah. could give people a bunch of people AIDS. But yeah, if you gave. If, <laughs> If you made like AIDS, you can make a name for yourself one way or the other. If, right? you, if you made AIDS uncurable again, if you if you came up with a new <laughs> AIDS and fucked it back into existence, then you'd be the most powerful version of that name, I guess. Yeah, like there was one person who started this whole pandemic. There's one. Well, it was a it one was a, patient it sounds, zero. Right? It sounds like it was a lab in Wuhan. Right, but somebody did it. Either, either it was a doctor, yeah. in a lab. I don't understand or the lab one, argument. One I don't understand because it's like that's what I've been hearing about that. I mean, the pangolin thing made more sense to me than the lab, because I'm like, well, well, where the fuck did they get this thing if it was in a lab? Like you, like well, coronavirus has existed for at least right as far as humans are since for like seven the fifties. I think yeah, was, like the fifties, sixties, yeah. like yeah. SARS. They called it SARS yeah. too. But but this yeah. one, where did this one come? How how could this one come from a lab? Like this version? Well, chances are they were just fucking trying to figure out a way to cure it. And they accidentally made it mutate. That's what usually ah. happens when viruses mutate yeah. like that. Like it's like that happens in medicine all the time. Vi- Viagra used to be a drug for asthma. Like that's what they wanted because it increases the O2 in the bloodstream. <laughs> and then everybody just got hard dicks. Yeah. Can you imagine being in the first <laughs> trial of that? You're like, whoa. Like, yeah. So whoa. it like it increases the, the oxygen in your bloodstream. That's yeah. why it makes you it makes more blood go to your fucking dick. So uh, I don't know. Half the room took placebos, I imagine, like a normal study. Sure. So there were, you know, half dicks and half not dicks. <laughs> Could you imagine funny. going in for an asthma test and all of a sudden you walk out with this rock hard boner for three days <laughs> right, and you're like, right. man, didn't do anything for my asthma, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to say anything. Right. I wouldn't even report any side effects yeah, on that. I guarantee you, there were a lot of there were a lot of a lot of asthmatic children born nine months after that. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Did you have that in college yeah. or anything? Did you guys do any of those tests? Because they paid a lot of money to no, go and do I, those. I, Gonzaga, I went to Gonzaga. I don't know if it was too small or what. I don't remember hearing about any of those kind of trials mm. when I went to school. My, the main thing we all did then was just uh, selling plasma. But, I, but no, oh, yeah, but no yeah, clinical yeah, trials. Yeah. Sold, sold a lot of plasma. Yeah, did you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I had roommates that sold it all the time. And then they would do these weird like clinical trials for like six weeks. Oh, wow. Um, and they would, yeah, they would come back pale and like, sweaty <laughs> and like things were happening. One, one, one of my roommates, I was like, hey, man – I'm not sure what it is you're doing, right? Uh, but you look fucking awful and, and like you could die. And he was like, but it's so much money. And I was like, awesome, man. You can't even get out of bed right now. Well, uh, that's I've been donating uh, sperm blood for years. Mm-hmm. Have whether, you really? Whether people want it or not. Yeah, you've just been giving it some? Have you been donating? Yeah, it's not really. <laughs> is it your <laughs> sperm and someone else's blood? <laughs> like, what's the... <laughs> 
<laughs> it depends on the day, really. <laughs> sometimes it's my blood, sometimes it's not. You give a you do give away a lot of blood though every month. Blood, yeah, because I take TRT. And okay, it makes your uh, hemoglobin really high, so I get blood. Got it, got like it, got once it. Once every two months, and they tell you to just to get rid of some blood. Mm-hmm. What's T- is, what do they is do with TRT? Is TRT testosterone therapy? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, are you on it? No, I did it before, and <laughs> I did it when I was out in LA, and I went to some weird doctor that he was like he was a shady doctor for sure, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and he gave me way too much. And uh, I don't know, my levels were like five, six times what they were normal, and I was like super horny, Oof. and I was angry, and I was. My bench press was like NFL Columbine or like combine. <laughs> combine. It was like I remember I read Columbine. <laughs> it was like a Columbine. No, but it was like and it, I remember I did like uh, I went from like I was doing two twenty five whatever bench press and I'm not like the strong never been like the strongest guy and I could get it like eight nine ten reps and he jacked up my levels and I was re- I was doing t- sets of twenty with two hundred twenty five pounds like I was a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> but I also wanted yeah, to murder strangers. Much. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that might be too much. So I wish I wish I would have done it the right way, because then I got off it. Because uh, my my guy Joe, my audio engineer here, who was in a set before we started the show, he's doing it right mm-hmm. now, and he is loving mm-hmm. it. Oh, it it changes your whole life. <sighs> yeah, it really does. If it's if you do it the right way, it changes your whole life. But it can also fuck you up. So you got to go to somebody reputable. Yeah, I might want to try it yeah. again. My doctor's not real hot on it, but uh, because I he said there's something he made me freaked out because I have like there's like prostate cancer in my family, and he says uh, mm-hmm. that that. It can increase the risk of that if you do testosterone treatment. It can, but so can eating a lot of red meat. But the like, ah. so there's a there's a really good uh, German study about red meat diets and prostate cancer. But it's mostly if you if you look at the subset of people who had high fiber diets, also it completely goes away. Huh, so okay. there's always a there, there's a left and right, you know, on all those. Man, you just got to figure out what the balance. I is. I should do it again because I, I I loved it. I was I was horny. I was strong. Yeah. I was I was yep. alert. Yeah. yeah. It, no, like people people talk about the physical effects of it, but the mental yeah. acuity and stuff that you get from being sharp like that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, even like Joe was talking, like he was fading every afternoon, uh, you know, two, three o'clock. He would just be so tired. And he'd go when he'd be like be home that evening with the family, just like no interest. And he said that since yeah. he's been doing this stuff, like his energy just sustains. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, he's been not he's been not only fucking his wife, he's been fucking his kids. He's been fucking his neighbors, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> no, but he is like, he's he's strong all day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it it is great, and it does do all that shit. Yeah. Um, the the murder thing though, I can't tell if I just want to murder. Like, oh, I've right. always wanted to murder people, sure. so I don't know if that's the TRT or just like normal life. I've always and wanted that one's hard to block out. I've always wanted to too, but I noticed that when I was. <laughs> Really, and again, I think I was just given way too much. Uh, I would go from thinking things to just confronting strangers in public. Like, like, and that's, I, I've never been that easy to snap. And I was just, uh, like, towards the end of it, several times where even, like, a friend, this comic Dave Waite was like, dude, what just happened? And it was like somebody honked at me as I was, <laughs> as they were passing around, and I followed them in the car, and I was screaming out the window, like, fucking pull over. Like, I, I wanted to fucking kill them. And then, like... Two minutes later, yeah. I was totally back to myself again. I was like, wow, what was that all about? But you just have, like, these crazy mood spikes. Oh, so you – yes, but you knew, though, like, in it, right? Kind of. I, like, it was more like afterwards. I would just – it would feel mm. like the anger was valid in the moment. And then afterwards, I was like, what was I – why was I doing that? <laughs> like, like – Yeah, for that re- – I've, I've grown very distrustful of my own anger over the years. For that reason and for other reasons, like post-traumatic stress and shit like that. So you that. can kind of, you just, like, you just don't, like, you're better at managing, like, those, like, uh, outbursts? A little bit, yeah. It's like, uh, it takes a lot to set me off now. Yeah. But it's it, it was a process for sure, like, realizing what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And being able to, it, you, you can know what's going on and still lose control in the moment, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's easy to do that. I think if I, so I think if I did it again, I'd handle it better. Yeah, I, I I would hope, but it was just yeah, it was just uh, and again, it's probably like levels and stuff. And I, and I had a friend at the same time who was doing anabolic, just straight up roid roids, and yeah, uh, D ball. <laughs> yeah, he was shots, you know, shots in the <laughs> ass, you know, like yeah. all this stuff. And he was oh my god, crazy angry outbursts. Where I remember having a talk with him, I'm like, dude, you're gonna go to prison like soon. Like, and, 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 and he looks like a guy, he's like, he's a big dude, tatted up to his chin, you know, full, like everything. And he like, 
He looks like he's already been in prison. I remember one time at uh, at Angels Stadium, wherever the house, that stadium is called down in Anaheim. Yeah. We were there with it, and it's like me and my wife and then the two kids and then him and his wife and their two kids. So it was like a family outing. We're in the upper deck sitting in the front row, and some little kids were just throwing candy, like little, like like almost like um, little mints or whatever, little hard candies. They were just throwing them at people in front of them. And uh, he see, he sees one, you know, zing by, and then he's like, I don't know who's throwing that fucking candy, but they better knock it off, uh, you know, like whatever. <laughs> and then a piece of candy <laughs> hits his son, and he stands up and just faces an entire section of the ballpark and just screams. Like this is like, you know, seventh inning, you know, it's, it's still like light out. And he, he goes, I don't know who the fuck is throwing this fucking candy, <laughs> but if I have to go up there and slap somebody's fucking daddy, that's what I'm going to fucking do. And then he just mean mugged. The whole section, and he's all like veins sticking out, <laughs> and then just sat down. And all of us were like, "Jesus Christ, it's candy, dude!" Like he was ready to straight up murder strangers for candy. <laughs> I get it, though. You know, I feel that all the time. It's like the Hulk. They ask, and the, at the end of one of the movies, "What's the secret?" The secret is that I'm always angry, or whatever. The yeah, fuck. I think you just get used to being. It's like somebody that that has chronic pain. You're just used to being in pain Funny. all the time. That's a good analogy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. I'm surprised doing what you do, like with Time Sucker, yeah. you get to research the most fascinating topics of literally human history, yeah. right? And a lot of them are murders. Yeah. Um, uh, and we'll get to you and your wife's new show in a second, but um, I, I'm, I'm curious if that doesn't want to make you murder because you know more than like the average person about murders <laughs> right. and how to get away with it. Like. Is there ever a time when you've done one of these shows and then you just get off air and you're like, fuck, man, I could probably get away with just like one or two murders. Like nobody's going to catch me. You know, it's, it's like with the historical stuff, I will say that as time has gone on, it's gotten harder and harder to get away with murder. Like like mm -hmm. most of the uh, mass murderers, you know, serial killers who are really prolific, you know, they were they were either killing um, kind of like transient, you know, like like, like it's like mm -hmm. pro prostitutes, common, you know, serial killer victim. Mm. Because they generally don't have strong family ties. Uh, they're, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, with drug addiction and stuff, and they're, they're gone for days without telling anybody already. And so it's, you know, it's easier for them to kind of disappear and not raise a bunch of red flags right away. And to just murder, like, uh, like a random person that you just don't like. It's actually, I think, made me more hesitant to indulge in that, like, fantasy norm where I'm like, I'd probably get caught because it's so hard now. Like, 100 years ago, so easy. So easy yeah. to get away with murder. I yeah. often, I often uh, daydream about living in the 19th century. I oh. would have murdered ev everyone. Yeah, and people, like, and people, no one people disappear all the time. If I had lived, if yeah. I had lived in the 1800s, no one would have been safe. No, no one. Like literally, no one. My friends, my family, no one. <laughs> right, right, right. There were. I mean, uh, oh my god. Uh, now I'm blanking on her. Oh, Bell Gunnis. Bell Gunnis. Oh, yeah, like yeah. it was ridiculous the kind of murder she got away with in the uh, late 19th century. Where she would just like advertise in the paper, like this lady, I have land, looking for a new husband, like kind of like wealthy widow type thing. And then she would get guys that would, you know, come to be like possible suitors. And then she would somehow convince them to sign over their life, life insurance policies to her quickly after getting there, probably sex them up or whatever. And then just, she would just straight up just kill them. She would just kill them and just, and just feed them to her hogs and move right on to the next guy. And she did that for years. And the families were suspicious, but they didn't have fucking detectives or anything back then. So they could be yeah, like, yeah. they could be like, yeah. And if you yeah. if you want to look just to see how crazy that story truly is, go look up a picture of her. Oh, really? Like she looked... she's not hot. <laughs> and <laughs> the fact that she was able to trick all these men, she must have there something crazy was going on. Maybe maybe it was like a cult like thing. Like she was just an enigmatic character that was or whatever the fuck. But I don't know. She's she's ugly, very yeah. ugly. I I wonder too if maybe Man. she was just a little freakier. Where back then, where people were a little bit more uh, proper, whatever. Right. I mean, I mean, if mm -hmm. she was just, you know, wild in bed or whatever. And, we're, and and they never show the pictures of the dudes. So if they were a lot older than her and, like, more ugly and comparatively, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. she was, like, a catch. And she, she, yeah, she used maybe. her money. She, like, the, 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 the lure tour was, like, they were going to be partial owners in this huge amount of land she had. So I think she kind of lured, tricked him with some money and stuff, too. I wonder what her accent sounded like. She was a first generation Norwegian American. Oh, she had one of those hinged, 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 like one of those little <laughs> sing song. 
That had to have been part of the attraction, though. Yeah. Look, maybe she was the first one to throw a finger in the ass <laughs> just during <laughs> sex. And then, hin, 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 do, hin, do you like a little oof, a little oof in the hiney? Yeah, just something back there. <laughs> but yeah, but now I think about, uh, oh man, I, I mean, maybe learn more where I, I do have those fantasies. My fantasies around murder now are like somebody did something to someone in my family, you know? And then it, it's okay. like, it's all like revenge killings. So it's like you you want to be uh, what's it Brian from Taken? You want to be Liam Neeson, right? Yes, yes. You don't want to just murder for no reason. No, it used to be more Dexter. That was my my previous like long term murder fantasy was the Dexter type fantasy where it's just you know like uh, some hardcore pedophile moves into the neighborhood and he mm-hmm. hasn't done anything to my family, but I know he's a piece of shit. I know he's gonna have you know probably like act on something, and then I would just like somehow magically snuff him out and not get caught. Now it's more mm-hmm. like yeah. somebody fucks with a member, like my wife or kids, and then you know I have to kill them. Um, but it's yeah, it's tricky. Like I've gone, I've gone pretty lengthy in my fantasies about like how I get away with it. And now you got to think of so many things where I'm like, well, shit. Like wh- where, where are the traffic cameras near me? You know, mm-hmm. and it's like cause yep. I don't want to like drive in the wrong spot. And then it's like, well, when you when you do it, I, I've had this fan. This is how far I've gone with it. You have to get like gloves and like duct tape. You have to, you know. First off, you have to kill them with no witnesses, which is going to be tricky. And then you have to take mm-hmm. their cell phone. And I've even imagined where I would do it. There's a gas station near my house. I would duct tape <laughs> their cell phone to the bottom, or leave it on to the bottom of this long haul truck, knowing that when it goes, it's going to pull their cell phone signal in one direction. Then I got to like, there's some woods up past my house. I guess I have thought about this quite a bit. There's some some yeah. national forest land up past my house. I know it doesn't get used at night, you know, when it's not hunting season especially. I have to go dig the grave ahead of time. So when I get up there, I put the body in. Then, you know, <laughs> like yeah, it's a, it's a whole it's a long complicated system and I also have to sneak out of my house, which is tricky and have because my wife won't cover for me. She's already told me that. So that's yep. that's upset. Oh, she won't? No. So no. that's upsetting. Why? Cuz it makes her and the kids live right. you. you can't right. do that. So she's oh, so she doesn't yeah, want man. me to do you gotta it. Have- Church, church and state on the murder. Yep. Really? Yep. So, so now I, so you've so, gone, so you've, I have to sneak out. You, she sleeps hard. So I would have to probably give her some extra stuff in her sleep to knock her out. Mm-hmm. Then, then we have a security system that, tr- that tracks when you open and close doors. So it's like I, it's a whole fucking thing I'd have to plan out. It's like because you can't trip that in the middle of the night because that could come back to haunt yep. you. We should do a show called How to Murder. Yes. Yes. Someone who's like you, who's researched murder quite a bit, and someone like me who's done murder quite <laughs> yeah, a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, like, okay. That would be That's a good the, tandem. the best. Because I yeah. think there's a lot of people out there that need that. And I'm with you, by the way. So, like, my fantasies have gone all the way to the very end and what's <laughs> right. going to happen. Yeah. And, and where and why and all that other shit. Um, the ring thing always gets me. The ring. Everybody's got a ring outside of their door. Um, so, in all of these cases now that I keep seeing these murder things. Yeah. They're getting tripped up or burglaries or anything else um, that I see on, like, local news, right? right? They'll never put this on national news. It's those ring cameras now that are on everybody's fucking doors. Oh, so, oh yeah, we have one of those. We have one of those where somebody comes. Yes. Yep, yep, exactly. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, we just got one. So if you were going to kill somebody in their neighborhood, right? Right. Because there's not a lot of people that don't live in a neighborhood. Or if you were going to track them from their house to wherever they were going right. to murder them, you're going to pass, like, 50 different rings, and that's going to be on there. Um, yeah, you know all of their security cam footage, and it's like, God damn it! The one that got me because I've always wanted to murder as well. Yeah, um, it was the Aaron Hernandez doc. Oh and yeah, so that was a great doc. It was a great doc, mm. but the the problem is he's the dumbest criminal. Of oh all my god! Time. And why the fuck did he have cameras inside of his house? Right, in every single room. Right. I mean, you saw that motherfucker yep. with the gun right after he murdered somebody, and then the wife walking yeah. out with the. Uh, she has the, the, like all of it was on camera, right? And and he dumped the, like killed and dumped the body like so close to his house. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was like a mile and a half with away. With like right. chewing gum from his own mouth, chewing gum, yep. weed. He was smoking weed. Oh my god! Uh, he left a roach there, all of it, and it was just like god damn. And it made it so easy yeah. that I was just like, all right, cool. But the my biggest takeaway from that yeah. was the ring thing, where it was like, all right, if I'm driving yeah. to case somebody's house and then trying to murder them later, just trying to catch them on the way out. My car is going to go past all their all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, and yep. Everybody in my neighborhood has one of those ring devices. Yep, yep. And, and, and he was texting with him all the time. Yeah, like I think like ideally what you do is like you have to have like a one other person where you kill for each other, like a partner. And so mm-hmm. like let's say like you and I are, are murder partners. Somebody fucks with your family. You don't kill them. I have to kill them. 
Because then it's like Ooh. one more degree of separation. Ooh. But then it's like if somebody fucks yeah. with my family, then you have to kill them. Because that's a thing, too, where it's like a lot of my fantasies involve somebody that I have some kind of personal relationship with. But then you're a primary suspect if they do something to you and then they disappear three days later. <laughs> you know, you're the first person the police are going to look at. But if, but if it's a friend of yours, the fucking police are never going to look at them. But then, you know, but then you got to keep your mouth shut. I mean, I don't know. It's, why is, you do ooh. need a murder partner in this life. And, but I also <laughs> feel like this, like. I wouldn't have gotten married yeah. if I didn't trust my wife with a murder, like and for yeah. both sides. If, if I murder someone, she's not going to say anything. And if she murdered somebody, I'm not going to say anything. Right. Simply for the fact of I want that level of trust, yeah. one. Two, if she, if she murdered somebody, I'm assuming she had a good reason for it. Right. Like she doesn't – she's not a, a person who would just go out and, and murder at random. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I- – What do you mean at – what do you mean at random though? Like – the same f- same goes with you. So the, you're, the fact- you're, you're one of my best friends. If you went out and murdered somebody after the show was over and they came, the cops came to me and said, hey, man, where was Dan during all this other shit? I would say, you know, he was here and then I'm not really sure. Right. Um, and, and I would keep it as vague as possible and move on with my day. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you probably did murder that person, but I'm assuming they also deserved it as well. You don't mm-hmm. seem to me like the person who would just do it at random. It would have to be somebody that really grinded your gears, you know? Um, I mean, there's there's targets and there's targets of opportunity. Like a target I would consider somebody that I'm actively trying to kill. And a target of opportunity is like, ah, oh, this will be easy. Yeah. But right? bo- both are equally exciting to you? It's, no, it's never exciting. <laughs> it can't be. So there's a guy named John Mennery. It might be interesting to you. He's a CIA case officer back in the, uh, during the Cold War. Yeah. And he wrote a he wrote a manual on assassination called "Kill Without Joy." Okay, that's the name of it. Uh, you should look it up. You can if you just search and "Kill and Without Joy," like 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 poisoning people's just drinks or like like really like sneaky ways or something or all sorts all sorts of ways, including direct hand to hand combat. Wow. The, the the idea the general principle beh- behind it is that you you terminate the life as if you were swatting a fly. Like it can't mean anything more to you than that. Right. And it's you know it's a it's a <laughs> I don't think a lot of people are capable of having that kind of mindset, but more than you would think. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you probably could do that, honestly. I feel like just <laughs> as much as I know you, I feel like you could probably do it. Well, I do have to, it's, it's funny because people talk about the morality of it, but it's like, and, and, you know, and I haven't done it, so it's, easy, it's one thing for me to say it, but like, um, I don't feel bad about killing an animal, like, like, okay, like a deer or something like that. I don't feel bad about killing a deer that you're going to eat because, like, I don't feel bad about eating a hamburger. <laughs> And then I, I, right. I feel like I would feel, but the deer hasn't done anything to me personally or to other people I care about where if somebody were truly in my mind like a heinous piece of shit that the world would be better you know, off with, without them being here, I, I think I would feel good about it, that I would feel mm-hmm. like I had done like a good thing where people are like, oh, man, would you have trouble sleeping? I, I, I don't think so. Like uh, you've done a great service to the planet. Like what? Yeah, what's yeah. there to feel bad about? I really think some of these billionaires, like Soros and uh, and uh, Bloomberg and these guys and the Koch brothers, they should all get together and instead of funding political campaigns, just fund hit squads to go murder pedophiles. Ooh, yeah. That, like who would stop? It'd be, it'd be we've a good we've one, talked yeah. about this a million times on this show. That's what my dream is. Whenever I become independently wealthy, yeah. I'm just going to kill pedophiles, dude. Um, I'm I'm yes yes. That's a fantasy I share. Oh yeah, but oh, yeah. like who? I, I wonder, I, I, 10 years ago, when we first, Jared and I used to talk about this back in the day, when we first started talking about this shit, um, I wondered, like, who the fuck would even say anything? Right. But now, who knows, man? The way the the left has become in this country, and not just the left, but some sensitive, more sensitive people on the right, are they really going to fucking complain? Maybe. Maybe. Now. Now I'm not so sure, I guess. Well, the- people stand up for the weirdest groups of people these days. Right, right. That is a weird thing where... Uh- <sighs> yeah, I feel like some people are just in such denial over human nature. And it does tend to be like when you're younger and you're more idealistic and you're like, no, man, everybody, you know, deserves a, a chance at redemption. And I'm like, no, they don't. No. Like there's a hard yep. line that you can cross. And when you cross that line, fucking die. Like, no, yeah. you, you made that choice. <laughs> you put your finger in that kid's ass. The fucking, you know, your socioeconomic status didn't fucking grab your hand and shove it in a fucking nine year old's vagina or whatever. It's like you decided to do that, so fuck you, so fucking die. Yeah, I feel, I feel like there's a very hard line between uh, selling drugs because you're poor and fucking children. Yep, yep, agreed. Yeah, and I, if you can't figure out 
the difference between those two things, maybe you don't belong in society either. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I agree. Honestly, like if you can't tell the difference between like drug crime and raping children, you may you may not be suited for the gene pool. You know, it's it's funny. We always talk about natural selection. Yeah. Uh, and what that means for us, and then the interdiction of society into natural selection. Now that we're conscious and aware of it, yeah. and aware of ourselves and all this stuff, we can influence it. Why aren't we? Why aren't we influencing? Like I know we call that eugenics and stuff like that. Right. But there's certain traits. It's not about skin color or any of that bullshit, right? Or or even nationality or ethnicity. It, it's about like what are traits that we desire in in our society. Pedophilia probably universally would be not one of those. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, right. I don't know how many, like if anybody said, yeah, pedophilia, maybe we can leave it in there. Just kill them because they're a pedophile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, Only a right. pedophile would say Only, that. Yeah. So yeah. why aren't we just murdering all these people and getting them out of the gene pool? It, That's what I don't understand. It is, yeah, it's a weird thing with like, w- like why isn't, you know, chemical castration or certain things like way more prevalent for certain predators at the very least. And, and, that, and that argument yeah. you just made about like the eugenics thing. I remember when I was a senior in college, uh, my work study job was child protective services. And so I'd go with these social workers, you know, and have to like go, you're dealing with clients who have either been temporarily uh, had their parental rights suspended and have to do like, you know, supervised visitations or whatever. Or in some cases, you know, dealing with things where like, uh, you know, the kids are taken away more permanently from the parents. And I, I'll never forget this one case where there was this lady who uh, was a convicted sex offender. And the state had decided, the state of Washington decided that she would never, ever be able to raise her own children again. But uh, she wasn't sterilized. And so every two years, roughly, let's get this social worker was telling me she would have another kid. And then the social Oof. workers would have to be like, you know, the hospital would notify CPS and they would take the baby and put the baby into foster care from the hospital. And so no, no way. Yep, and so I brought up, I'm like. How the fuck is she not sterilized? I'm like, she's, they, they should force her. And then I remember the social worker was like, oh, my God, no. And then he brought up Hitler and he brought up the <laughs> eugenics thing. And I'm like, yeah, but that's, that's different. It's not the same motivation. It's cause and effect. No, it's deterministic. It's, it's, they've made, they've, they personally have engaged in an activity that has warranted that behavior. Right. Not just because it's not about their right to exist. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. right. That's where I get, that's where I get off track with the, uh, with some of the abortion arguments like i don't know they didn't have the chance to exist or some shit like that that's yeah. the only one that ever made any sense to me the rest of them are bullshit because the science doesn't back any of it up but that's the only one that made sense to me and in this case it makes sense because there's a difference between killing someone whose dad was a pedophile right right because we think it might be transferred genetically or whatever the fuck and then killing that person who is a pedophile right 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 exactly that a, that's big a, difference a marked difference between those two so yeah. Fuck that guy. Kill him. <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened with that lady, by the way, do you, <clears throat> is she still having kids? I mean, I mean, I was only there for a year, but yeah, as far as I know, I mean, you know, based on laws, I'm sure she kept having kids until she was no longer able to have kids. And then they just kept taking them from the hospital and putting more well, kids into foster know, care. At least she's not like a shark. Shark, like eat a bunch of their babies. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they're all, they're all like, they get pregnant constantly because they eat so many. I, I learned this from Chris Hardwick, actually. No way. Did they, I, I didn't um, know that about sharks, that they eat their own babies. Yeah. Yeah, like apparently the mother shark, I believe Hardwick said, basically thinks she's a vending machine. Yeah, <laughs> so she just fires out, fires out a bunch of baby sharks, eats half, the other half. Eh, yeah. we'll see what happens. Why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's a tasty treat. God, how, <laughs> how weird would that be if like that was the tasty? Like, if you knew that your own baby was the best food you'd ever eat. And so you're well, like, Jonathan oh. Swift knew. That's why I wrote a modest proposal. <laughs> Jonathan <right? laughs> Swift. <laughs> if you haven't read a modest proposal, I, I, all of you should go read it. It's Jonathan Swift, the guy that wrote Gulliver's Travels. Yeah. yeah. During the Great Potato Famine in Ireland, wrote a, a short story about mm-hmm. how everybody in Ireland should have one child to replace themselves and then eat the remaining children. Yeah. And then, and if you read, like and a, if anybody reads that and you're outraged, also, also look up the word satire. And then read that. Yeah, exactly. And then like, oh, okay. We don't. That doesn't exist anymore. Satire. I know. Oh my god. I know. <laughs> doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. It's amazing. Uh, by the way, yeah. w- one of my favorite uh, listeners, my f- actually my favorite listener of, of this show we've ever had in the history, came up to me at a live event and he said, "I heard you talking about murder on one of your shows. <laughs> I want you to know, I would never say anything, and you can you can burn the body at my place." <laughs> That's a good fan. He went into great detail of. He's like, look, I've got diesel gasoline. I, I live here. I have this many acres. He was yeah. like, 
they'll never know. It's only going to take, you know, 24 hours to burn the body. And he goes, I will never say a fucking word. He goes, this show saved my life and I'll save yours by burning that body for you. If that ever goes down. Oh my God, that's great. Like, fucking A. Yeah. yeah. That's why I got into show business in the first place. For the, for the murder. <laughs> I mean, we've got a, we got OJ right here. Yeah, we get, wall, a, we get a signed uh, OJ Simpson jersey on the wall back here. So. That's what it's all been about for me. A lot of people, it's about like, oh, I want to buy my mom a house. Right. Oh, I need the attention or whatever. No, I just wanted to murder with impunity. Yeah. Look, if you if you keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars, you'll be able to do it one day. It's worked out so far. No one's caught me doing anything so far. No. <laughs> Now I'm just ima- imagining that, like, for some reason, in my head, like, the acceptance speech about that or something, like, like an Academy Award thing. But like, you're just thanking, you know, your fans for like uh, granting it's you a the, lifetime the achievement to, award, the ability to murder <laughs> and get away with it. I'm like, I'm like 80, and I'm finally on trial. I'm just like, hey, I just want to thank everybody who's made this possible. <laughs> 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 this number that you're tossing around in the media, that's rookie. Numbers. That's rookie numbers. I'm better than that. I've murdered hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of people. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk about you and your your wife's new show, Scared to Death. Yeah, it's been fun, man. It's uh, scared. How, huh? How is it working with your wife? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's good. The only <laughs> the only bummer has been like she genuinely like the premise was has worked better than I kind of wanted it to. I guess it's been the only backfire where I just thought it'd be funny. Like like my wife and I used to go watch horror movies together. It was one of our favorite things to do. Like you know, love scary stuff. But she would get a little scared. And so, like, the premise, I just thought, like, oh, okay, like, a, a scary story is, is fun to tell somebody, not just to, like, tell alone, like, mm-hmm. time suck. And I wanted to do, like, paranormal kind of, like, you know, ghost stories, supposed exorcisms, weird urban legends, things that don't really fit in time suck. Because those things do interest me, and I love a good horror movie. And uh, <laughs> and then after about four weeks, I start, I scared my wife so bad that, like, I thought she was going to have a, a fucking mental breakdown. Like, she was <laughs> so freaked out because it's like, I'm, you know, the, I'm telling, like, stories that are supposedly the most credible. Like, wow, man, that's weird. There was a lot of witnesses. A lot of people supposedly saw this. Mm-hmm. That's crazy that that part was documented, you know, about some supposed demon or, or whatever. And I, I did a better job than I guess I thought I was going to do because then, like, every bump in the house was no longer just the bump of an old house. It was... You know, definitely a demon. It was definitely, you know, an angry spirit. Like, we actually had to have a talk about, like, we don't need to do this anymore if this is going to, like, ruin your brain. And then, really? Yeah. And then she, she, she came back from the brink and now, now she's handling it okay. But, uh, because <laughs> the because if, if you don't listen to Dan's show, the way you say things is so matter of fact, but they're the most heinous things on earth. Sure. Um, on time sucking and, and then on scared to death. And it's like, if it's not somebody who's in your mindset of this, of like, oh, yeah, and this happened, right. it was no big deal, and, you know, it was another day at the J-O-B. <laughs> right, um, right. Yes, it would, it would freak people the fuck out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I, sometimes I, it is weird. Like, I've become so jaded in, in some sense because I'll get crazy the other way. It's like, uh, like with the horror stuff. Like, my mm-hmm. wife's reaction is to, like, oh, my God, you know, like, uh, sage the house or whatever. My, reac- <laughs> my reaction is, like, what if I just – put a pentagram on my chest and sat in the dark basement and played a Ouija board for a while. Like, what if I, yeah, what if, see what happens? Yeah. I just, cause I'm like, part of me is like, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> but part of me is like, that'd be the fucking coolest thing ever to see like a demon dude pop up in the corner. Yeah. It'd be scary. But also it's like, yeah. that is proof that I guess I've either lost my mind, but if I haven't lost my mind, that's proof that if that thing's real, then who knows what else could be real. So like my personality yeah. is like, I'm tempted to like, let's just go further with this. Let's just, let's just go full Alistair Crowley. And try and fucking have summon you, something. Has there any, ever been a night where you're like, hey, let's just do a fucking seance and hire some people and get them over to the house and see what happens? I don't trust other people. I don't trust, like, I don't think that would convince me. I would be so worried that they were full of shit. Like, I'm so skeptical yeah, that, like, I'd almost have to do it by myself. Like, I, I would have to be like, I'm like, well, this is supposed to be real. I want to sit in the, in the dark. I got the Ouija board. And then... I don't know. I, I would just be so worried that it would be the power of suggestion or something if there was other mm-hmm. people. Although, well, the power if we saw something, that'd be strong, cool. Right? Yeah, the power of suggestion. Oh, it's so yeah. strong. Didn't Carlin used to do a joke about that? He was like, if you tell people that uh, God is his own dad and he fucking saved the world from himself, they believe you. But if you put a sign that says wet paint on the wall, they'll walk up and touch it to see if the paint's still wet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that sounds like Carlin. I don't remember that, but that yeah. sounds like his kind of yeah. logic. Yeah. Yeah, I see for for me, uh, because I have a a host of show with my wife as well. Yeah. 
um, psychics have always been the thing where it was just like, hey, that's just do cold you believe reading. In, yeah, yeah do, you, do you believe in psychics and all that other shit? So I was like, <clears throat> we were out one night at a bar. Yeah. Um, kind of like a trendy, you know, hipster type bar. And there was this, uh, like a psychic giving readings in the corner. And so I, you know, made the, the remark of like, is this real? Sure. Are you real? And blah, 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 blah. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, went into her whole life story. So I was like, great. Why don't you come on the show? OK. And do this. Read us both live on the show. And we switch segments. So like I left the room for a half hour. She did my wife. And then she left the room. And then she did me for a half hour. And I was like, look, we'll be able to play this out six months later. And the audience knows you're going sure. out to two million people. Like, the audience knows whether or not you're full of shit or not. And, right. Uh, she got no, she got nothing right. She got nothing there right. Been, nothing. No, and they never do. There have been no. many, many of these tests. Uh, Richard Dawkins used to hold these tests all the time for people that claim to be uh, telepaths and and uh, various other gifts, right? If you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. And they would set up different kinds of tests for them to do, like. Uh, like a number, a ping pong ball with a number on it under a bowl. And there's five sure. bowls there. You just walk in, no context. You just have to choose which one it's in. Mm-hmm. And they got it right at about the rate you would expect, which is one-sixth. One yeah, six, just guessing. One-sixth is like a, a random guess. Really? Yeah. Fuck, that's weird you say that. So in high school, there was there was one in high school at our graduation party. Yeah. It was put on by the school, and like there was each room had a little theme, like a game show or a yeah. Uh, well, one, there was a psychic in one, and so it was. I think six or seven of us went into the psychic one, and we're half in the bag at this point, you know, asking, firing away with questions and everything. And we asked this, this lady, we, we go, "Hey, which one of us is going to die first? You know, Whoa. it was high school graduation away. Yes, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. totally fucking around. It'd be funny if she pulled out a gun and shot <laughs> one of you and just said, "Well, <laughs> she kind of did." That so guy, she, where's my money, bitch? It, it, you could tell, like. She was kind of fed up by it, but but literally within like a second, she just goes, fine, it's him. He's the one that's going to die. And it was just like, what? I mean, it stopped all of us cold. And we were like, holy shit. Um, you know, we were like, are you are you serious? And she was like, you asked. And that was the deal. You came in here and you asked. The what? Questions, I give you the answers and that's it. Yeah. Sure <laughs> enough. He was the first one of our childhood friends to die. Oh, I my God. Do- yeah. I want to be a psychic that only gives bad news. <laughs> <laughs> just tells you the shitty just, things are going to happen. Yeah, just as a social experiment to see how it would go. Because right. I feel like part of the part of the hook is the the vague notion that there might be some money coming your way. Sure, or sure. Some resolution or that your father in hell doesn't really hate you. It was just mad about something else the whole time he was alive or whatever the fuck. Yeah. I just want to be the one, the first negative psychic like hey man it's not gonna yeah work out. yeah that, that's what <laughs> that, that's one of the things that kills that stuff for me and just makes me think like there's no way is uh you know those people who talk about like past lives and everything and they give you like your spirit reading there was um <laughs> on the we have like a patreon version of the show like the secret suck and on that one we do a, a weekly <laughs> segment on wackadoodles just psychics uh people who are like alien channels anything anything where they're trying to make money off of this supposed weird ability where you know they're they're selling books based on bullshit, or they're or they're giving readings based on bullshit, and I did a reading, paid for like these two audio readings for this lady who is David Ike. He's the big uh, crazy lizard Illuminati guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. David Ike psychic. Uh, this Carol Clark I was able oh. to find out who she was, and I got two readings. And of course, when she talks about my past lives, it's like fucking Knights Templars, and it's all these like nobles, and I'm like. Why isn't the reading ever come back where it's like you come from a long line of nothing but janitors, and just yeah, you're a it, cattle, yeah. you're a cattle rapist, <laughs> you're a rape victim. You didn't even yeah. you didn't even work at the farm. You just showed up every week and raped one of right, the cows. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> it didn't even make any sense. Like your ancestors were nothing but pedophiles and rapists and fucking just dirtbags. <laughs> and it's like it's amazing that you did anything with your life. You know, it's but like just like the odds. It's like it's, there's always like some famous. You know, you go back far enough, yeah. and it's like you were Cleopatra once, or you. And then the future stuff is always like these bright, you know, warm future things. And there was a guy we did a few weeks ago. I'm blanking on his name, but he was a psychic. And in his bio on his website, he said that, like, you know, by the fourth grade, uh, you know, all of his classmates, even his teacher knew he could read other, you know, kids' minds and on and on. Mm. And every time I read that stuff, I'm like, then go to the fucking lab, you piece of shit. Do do yeah. do get get some science. Have it videotaped. Do your little mind reading thing that you've been doing since fourth grade, and become the most famous person who ever lived. But no, the richest, most famous yeah, person. Yeah, the all richest, time. most famous yeah. person of all time. But instead, you're doing weird fucking best Western conventions in front of thirty people. Yeah, you know, selling your forty dollars <laughs> psychic book. It's like get out of here, you snake oil salesman. Like how- 
how how much can you really expect people to believe you if you're operate if you're a psychic operating out of a strip mall? Right. Like you, why didn't you just put a bunch of money in the Super Bowl? Or yeah, you would have been rich enough yeah. to afford a, a huge place to yeah. do it at. Um, it is, I, it is, I agree with. Isn't that. it amazing how many people? What scares me about those kind of people are their followings more than the person. Like the David Ike, like whatever. Like David Ike, I get, I get somebody being crazy. I get somebody being self-absorbed and narcissistic and, and a little bit insane and paranoid and writing all the weird books they write. What scares me is when they have hundreds of thousands of followers. Like uh, like a David Icke video, what he's saying doesn't freak me out nearly as much as the comment section below. And and there's people oh, yeah. people even crazier than him. There's this one lady, Dolores Cannon, and she's she's dead now, but she wrote all these books about the most insane shit about like – Lemurians living in Mount Shasta and they're, they still talk to the Atlanteans who are still under the water somewhere and they have nuclear trains that trans, like on and on and on and on and it, all this stuff that's definitely not real and then you look at their like book reviews and you look at their Instagram followings and their YouTube comments and it's comment after comment of thanks for being a bringer of light thank you for your yeah. truth what the fuck you know what it, 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 you know what it tells me is that you could easily start a cult um, just the same way as they did back in the day, yeah. uh, like with Koresh and those guys. Yeah. I look at C Cardi B is the one for me, and I know that sounds fucked, but she has 64 million followers oh my God. on her Instagram. 64 million. 64 million. She went live last week with Bernie Sanders to talk about getting the, the, the young voters out to vote for Biden. Right. That's what we've – and I looked at that, and I was like, that's what we've come as a culture oh my where God. – People who are running for president are reaching out to Cardi, Cardi B. B to share an Instagram live video to get out to people to convince them to vote for the president of the United States. She was a stripper. Right. And on a reality show and who's, you know, become a rapper and made sure, a, sure. a beautiful life for herself. Yeah. And congratulations. But that's not the one who should have 64 million followers no. that's giving presidential advice of like, yes, this person should be leading our country yeah and uh, to me it's like uh, she could create a cult and yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure she could get at, at least yeah but there's cults have been toned down now you don't see a whole lot of things that we would call a cult but i see plenty of cults like everyone that follows for example gary vanderchuk and everything he says oh yeah he says he he tells like people who are in uh like people who are basically in poverty to quit your job and follow your dreams. Like, <laughs> right. that's easy for you to say when your parents gave you a $2 million fucking winery and you made your fortune. Off that. <laughs> right, right. Like, get fucked. That is, that's not how life works. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Tony Robbins is the same way. Yeah. I know that Tony Robbins is a really nice guy, but everybody that fucking thinks that you can read something in one of his books or The Purpose Driven Life or one of these books or any of the fucking word of faith like Kenneth Copeland and Ken. Oh, Hannah, my God. Pastor people. Copeland, my God. Yeah, he's nuts. <laughs> he's fucking like, if you crazy. Think you, if, if you think you're going to get some special insight from him and it's going to improve your life, particularly financially, then you're – and then the, to, in order to pay for that, you donate to him right. all mm -hmm. of your fucking money. Yeah. Like that's how cults work. Yep. You pay me fucking 25 bucks for my stupid book that tells you how to make a fucking gajillion dollars. By the way, I don't have a gajillion dollars until I wrote that fucking book and you paid me <laughs> right, for it. Right, <laughs> right. If somebody, if somebody wasn't already rich when they first started writing their books about how to get rich, they are full of shit. Right. Yeah. Period. So I asked, so a, a friend of mine wrote a book like that. Yeah. Like a, how to close, like something like that. You know? Sure. Fucking always be closing. <laughs> he, he lived in an apartment. Him and his, you know, his wife lived in a one bedroom apartment. Man. And I was like, What's what's the story with this? Yeah. You know, why go out and write a book knowing what you know and do, you know, and he laughed about it. Right. He was like, man, people are always out there looking for some way, some quick, you know, yeah. rich yep. thing or some advice or something that's motivational that just kind of approves what they think. Yeah. People are lazy and stupid. Yeah. I mean, there, there is this frustrating thing where it's like, you know, like uh, people, do, people don't want to grind. They don't want like the truth of like, yeah, like uh, how, what's your best odds of being successful? Work a lot of hours, work really fucking hard at what you have the most talent in and hope and hope that you get a little bit of luck. That's it. Like just, you know, like bust your ass, work as smart as you can, read as much as you can about your industry, you know, just work, work, work. You know, it's this crazy mm -hmm. thing where it's like um, I remember we'd get stuff when Time Suck started to do well. People would write in and be like, hey, you know, I'm wanting to launch my podcast and I see that you're doing, you know, pretty good. And, you know, it's like, uh, I mean, I'm hoping to get there. And I, and I would want to just be like, motherfucker, it took me 20 years of slowly building up a couple hundred thousand fans 
and then having a product that matched what those hundred thousand fans, you know, a couple hundred thousand fans liked, and then but it, but it was like mm-hmm. two decades of yeah. of a, yeah. just a, a slow war of attrition of content. It's like that's like you just wanting it to work isn't going to make it work in six months. Like I like I learned so much about human nature when I was a a personal trainer for a really brief window right out of college. And I was really into working mm-hmm. out for a little while. And I really was like, I don't know, drinking the Kool-Aid of that world and just thought I'm going to transform people's bodies and that let them live like better lives and blah, blah, blah. I might, I, I probably had 60 or 70 clients total for the brief time I did it. I think literally one of them got in really good shape because they actually <laughs> dieted and, you know, like watched what they ate and they did the mm-hmm. workouts and they followed the routine for months. Everybody else would um, show up, uh, do a half-ass workout, not listen to any nutritional advice, get put on you know more weight or stay the same, and then and then eventually get mad at me. And I'm like, I'm not a fucking magician. Like you, I can't yeah. just make you be have a six pack because you want one. You have to work really hard <laughs> at it. And nobody wants to hear that. I feel like in life, and I feel like you know no. maybe it's like I feel like an old man saying it, but it feels like the generation coming up and maybe. You know, the generation above me thought the same thing about me when I was young, but it's like, yeah, you just got to fucking work hard and it's going to take a while in all likelihood. But it's like nobody wants to hear that. No, not at all. And uh, going back to the podcast thing, because we get that all the time too as well. Yeah, you guys have grinded hard. For, for I think this podcast is on its fifth year now at this point, and uh, and built on the six, back of so many other things you guys you know like that were done before the yeah, podcast, books, movies, yeah. all, all that other stuff, yeah. right? Um, and it's it's one of those things that were like, man, I want to monetize my podcast immediately, and it was like, how how long will it take? And it's like probably a hundred episodes at least, um, because even right. in the, the early stages, you're tr- you're just trying to figure out what it is, right? And who you guys are, and and everything else, and. Uh, yeah, it takes a bunch of content from different places all over. Yep. The thing that pisses me off the most, and I don't know if, if it angers you as well, is the celebrities, the huge celebrities yeah. like Dax Shepard who come out with a podcast yeah. and they're number two in the world. Right. And you're like, oh, man, this is easy. There was a Forbes list that came out uh, maybe two weeks ago that had the richest, like top 10 richest podcast. Oh, okay. On there. Yeah. He was on there at like nine and a half million a year. What? And he, he just started like a year ago. And I'm like, I, I did see his go to the God top of the charts. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that is crazy where it's like uh, the average person doesn't realize that you just, or I don't know how they don't realize that, but it's like you just can't do that. Where, where Dax was able to tap into his connections from, I mean, he's been, I don't know, acting on some level for probably 15, 20 years. And, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, and so yeah, he has all these relationships. Yeah. yeah. And so he, yeah. he can have, you know, like some random person in Joplin, Missouri. You're not going to have uh, fucking Gwyneth Paltrow stop by and hang out in your attic for a, an hour to talk about life. That'll never fucking happen. But it's like, but he can have that. He and, and then and then you know that person can pull their followers. Yeah, they don't understand. Well, like, can you can you uh, buy can you buy a candle that smells like Dax Shepard's vagina though? Oh my! Yeah, oh my god! We made Gwyneth. fun of her shit so hard on the uh, what's it called? Her her company. Goop, goop. goop. Uh, yeah. We go hard against oh, goop, dude. Oh my god, all it's the such time. bullshit. There, I always go back to the same example. One of the first things she really got lit up for, yeah. and I think it was actually BuzzFeed that lit her up. She put out this like smoothie. This smoothie. It was like a recipe for a smoothie, and she like was kind of like shaming the audience. Like everyone should be drinking this. Every if you don't, you really don't care about your body, and it costs eighty bucks to make it. Eighty bucks. <laughs> so like, yeah, for yeah. one smoothie. <laughs> dude, and it was like. Hey, Gwyneth, uh, <laughs> no one has $80 to spend on their, uh, on a smoothie every single Dude, day. Dude, this, this uh, COVID-19 situation, like the whole shelter in place, I think, has really like shown how some celebrities are so tone deaf. Um, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of like uh, a lot of Schwarzenegger stuff. You know, I, I like the old bodybuilding days, the, you know, uh, what, Pump and Iron, whatever that doc he did with Franco Colombo oh, and those guys. That crazy. It's hilarious yep. to me, though. And, and, but I, it's like coming. He like, <laughs> I know. He's, he's a good sitting, pump is You've got to watch it. If you haven't seen it, he's like talking about how. Like a good pump's better than pump sex. In the gym is better than sex. And yeah. he's like saying all this fucked up shit in front of Lou Ferrigno's family. Oh, stuff. yeah. He, it was, he antagonizes yeah. the shit out of Lou Ferrigno. That whole thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lou Ferrigno is deaf, by the way, and probably the nicest human being on earth. Arnold's just sitting there talking shit to him and his mom and dad. Yeah. Like, like the whole time. But like, right. And he talked about Smoking it being mind weed. games. He just talked about it like it was intentional. He knew how to fuck with Frigno's head and get him so when he was yeah. posing, he wasn't thinking about what he was doing. He was thinking about Arnold Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. fucking with him. But like all the Conan, the Barbarian, the Commando, all I mean, I, I've loved a lot of stuff he's done just as an entertainer, whatever. I think he's like an interesting dude. 
And then on Instagram, when uh, two or three weeks into this, he was just really lecturing people like kind of high horse about basically that you're an idiot if you're not just, you know, going to ride this out and just stay in your house. It's not that bad. As he's sitting in this amazing hot tub, smoking a ex- super expensive cigar in this beautiful home where you know that, like, he's not going to the grocery store because he has fucking staff doing all that shit for him still. And I wanted to be yeah. like, fuck you, dude. Like, I know the person who just lost their job at the fucking restaurant or the small business owner isn't going to be just, like, hanging out being like, yeah, I'll just do what the governor told me to do and just hang out and enjoy <laughs> my life and enjoy. It's like, dude, he, he never has to work again. And he, he, and he gets to no. be rich forever. No, and if you're going to be on his staff, try and get pregnant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's worked. Be- it's worked before. Work for the maid. Ah. Work for the maid. It's wor- yeah. It's my worked. my biggest thing with the, with the quarantine and celebrities is uh, it really shows their ass as far as like, hey man, when you don't have writers, yeah, makeup, oh. uh, wardrobe, and everything else, like they all look like shit. Um, you know, very gray, right. and like, like non tanned, and everything else. Right. And you're just like, oh Jesus Christ, man. Uh, you really need a, a full team working for you, and you don't have it right now. The other thing is writers, man. Yeah. Where some of my favorite, you know, comedians and co- comedic actors, I should say, yeah, uh, are going on trying to do funny bits and things like that, and it's like, oh shit, you're really not funny without a good writer. Yeah, the, you know, the stand-up world has shown that a bunch. Where it's like, I don't, don't want to like throw names out just because they're like some some guys I like, but like funny mm-hmm. character actors who, for a brief time, like tried to get into the stand-up circuit and like do a tour. And just yeah. ate shit because, yeah. you know, that's just, it's a different thing. It's like, yeah, you can be a really funny, yeah. like weird character in a movie. That doesn't mean you can be a monologist for an hour and like hold a room with yeah. entertaining stories. It's, it's different types of, it's two different formats. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then the other ones too, with the celebrities, the ones that are just desperate for attention because they're not starring in something. Yeah. They're not on a red carpet. So they're going on with these weird talks about life and oh, you're yeah. just like, Jesus Madonna. Christ. And I, Madonna's one. Uh, and if I see the Instagram live feed, everybody's going live yep. on Instagram. Yep. Every, yeah. I, it's all too of them, clogged. It's too clogged with, with, with shit. Yeah. It's like, man, I, I – and I've seen friends, celebrity friends go on there, and they're talking about you know getting back to like hippie roots and all this other shit. And I'm like, motherfucker, I know where you live. Like, <laughs> right. you're not doing anything. Like, you're in your mansion No right one now. wants to hear that shit right now either. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Like you can talk about how it sucks or doesn't yep. suck or whatever the fuck, but but don't don't try to advise me from your fucking ivory tower, fuck face. Yeah, right, exactly. I'll come up there and murder everyone. <laughs> and I think after this is over, exactly. But I think a- after this is over, some of these people when they try to go back to film and TV and everything else, they're going to lose fans <laughs> yeah. because it was like, man, I saw behind the curtain who you were for right during whatever it was during this length of quarantine. You're kind of just a piece of shit. Like, right, right. And that's what it's going to be. I, th- I think they're going to lose some followers and things like that. And then the cachet of movies is kind of gone, too, for them. Oh, yeah. Where you see them without all this stuff, and you realize they're either not funny or they're not, you they know, anything interesting to say. Yeah. Uh, why am I going to pay for your movies anymore was, was one of the things that I keep thinking that about. That is a weird and, thing uh, with, like, social media where it's like I feel like some of the bigger celebrities listen to their uh, – um, agents and managers probably too much, you know, because it's like mm-hmm. they're always saying like, oh, this, you know, uh, fucking TikTok is hot. You got to get on TikTok and and this is hot. Yeah. You gotta, it's like, no, you don't. If you're like a huge celebrity, just fucking go away for a while. Build some mystique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about like Chappelle in the stand up world. My favorite part about him is he doesn't do any of the social media bullshit. He just like mm-hmm. he, 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 he just, you know, goes and lives his life. And there's some mystery, a sense of like, oh, I wonder what he's doing, you know, and. And then he comes back with this great new hour of stand-up. You're like, holy shit. And then you're amazed. It's like, uh, yeah. I wonder if some celebrities but are going to learn from this or maybe for future like PR stuff that they're going to be like, you know what? Maybe maybe you don't need to be on everything. Maybe you just need to be I don't quiet. Know if, I don't know if those celebrities can handle being away from the attention. Oh, that. okay. You know yeah. What I mean? That's yeah. that's what Chappelle, like Chappelle's a family dude. Yeah. Like he was a family guy growing up. He's a family guy now. I don't think. I think if all of it disappeared, he'd probably be fine. Right, right, him. right. I mean, money wise, obviously he would be fine. But I think even like even if he never got attention again, I think he would be fine with it. Yeah. After. Yeah, that is a like, different he, he psychology got, thing. Yeah. With, with Chappelle's show, he got like fucking flooded with shit, and it ruined his personal life for a while. I mm-hmm. think maybe. Yeah. A guy like that could probably just go away. Right. It is. It is interesting like, seeing how knows. it's affecting like other comics that way because because uh, I'm. I'm more like that where I love stand-up. I love telling stories, mm-hmm. love touring. 
but I don't need I don't actually need the attention like uh, on a psychological mm. level not touring hasn't bothered me at all because I'm also like happy at home and I'm happy like putting creativity yeah. into a podcast or putting creativity into like other projects it doesn't need to be that but some of my uh, you know comedy friends and stuff I can tell that it's uh, affecting them in a much different way like you know, mm-hmm. like they're, they're not getting that a- those accolades from strangers. They're not you know hearing those fresh laughs, and it's fucking them up mentally. Yeah, and I, I'm one of those people too, where I I wish I didn't have social media. Um, I liked it before when I didn't. The only reason I got it was because I was I was forced to. Yeah. Um, because it became the new way to promote yourself. Sure. Because magazines and all that other stuff were dying. Right. So typically in the past, you paid a publicist. Yeah. They went out and fi- found the press for you. They found the interviews. You did the stuff. Little by little, that is, you know, going out of style over the years. Yeah. And you're forced to promote yourself all day long and do all this other shit. Right. I, I always said this on my shows. I, I hope I get to the point where I'm rich enough where I just use a flip phone, <laughs> one of those razor flip phones. Yeah. And you never see me post ever again. The shit I do post now is weird as fuck anyways. But um, uh, I don't I don't want to do that. Right. And I'm I'm with you. Like, I love doing podcasts every single day. Mm-hmm. I love sitting there either with my wife or my best friend yeah. just chatting about life for an hour uh, and other guests and learning about people. Right. Like I get to talk to people every day that I would never get a chance to talk to in real life. And I love it. No part of me craves any form of attention like yeah. outside yeah. of doing the podcast where it's like, man, if all the social media and all that stuff went away, I still love my job every yep. day enough to go and do it. Even if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would still want to do podcasts every yep, day. Yep, yep. Um, just because I love it. That, that's that's that, yeah. No, I, I have the same mentality where it's like uh, I, I love being able to connect with fans and and uh, through social media to get them to come either listen to my stand up or listen to the podcast. But that's to me like mm-hmm. what the purpose is. It's just like because yes. yeah, these are yes. the things I actually love to do. Like I love researching weird shit on Time Suck. Uh, I mean, love it. Like, love just getting in my laptop and being like, what? This guy had how many fucking people in a cage? Like, why was he doing that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then love, like, the weird stories on Scared to Death. Love writing stand-up stories and thinking about the next hour. Oh, and actually, I, I, speaking of promotion, I, I keep forgetting. I do have a new stand-up special that's coming out uh, yes. in, a, in, like, a week. When is it? Uh, it do you really? Where at? Uh, it's like, it'll be on Amazon. and basically, It's not Netflix, but it's Comedy Dynamics. They did, like, um... Uh, Brian Callens and Gaffigan's like like last few I think, yeah yeah. And so it'll it'll be on like uh, uh, cable on demand, Amazon, all those things, and then and then it's on Pandora right now as like a sneak preview, but it's called a uh, Get Out of Here Devil, and so that was like the 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 last hour of stand up. But but that's but that's like what I love. I love like I love writing. I love writing stories. I love writing jokes. I love writing like podcast stuff, and then the the rest of it is just servicing that. Like, like, right. you know, like, uh, like if it wasn't for doing this, I don't know that I would be on any of the uh, social media stuff. Cause I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm more of just like, eh, it's kind of like a, a, yeah, it's pretty irritating. It is. I mean, I, one, one thing that I like is, um, that I can, I can literally see how people feel about what's being said and, or the content or the theme or whatever the case yeah. is. So you can get, you can get direct feedback that way. Yeah, that's true. But mostly it's like half cock nonsense from people who don't understand the industry, and also you can't really uh, put too much weight on one person's opinion, so that becomes problematic. I think there's some people that right. don't like reading reviews and things like that. Personally, I don't give a shit. Like I'm, my, my personality is geared towards not caring what people think about me. Right, right. So, uh, you know, it is what it is in that regard. But I do like the data yeah. part of it. I that, 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 you know that's I mean? that's like, good too. Yeah, I do like that too. I, I will look at the reviews. And I just look for trends. Mm. If it's uh, yeah. a few angry people, I don't put any weight into that. But if it's like consistently over two weeks, a lot of people angry about the same thing, then I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. that's something I should probably address. Yeah. You know? <laughs> maybe, well, I mean, maybe it is me. <laughs> right, maybe right. Is me. Truly, yeah. truly. If it's, if it's something simple, like could you turn the volume up a little bit? Or yeah. Maybe if you guys just went if, – if you just went 10 minutes longer, that would have been way better. And a bunch of people say, like, well, I guess we're going 10 minutes longer then. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, ultimately, it's a product. Yep, exactly. So it is no. what it is. I take it seriously, too. I remember for a while I was I was uh, doing a lot of uh, like a lot of uh pausing. And it got brought up in a lot of comments. And so I was like, okay, then that's, you know, that's that's something I can, uh you know, work at. That's something I can probably – You just did it, though. <laughs> You just, you just did it right there. Like, I, I know, I know, but I, I do it less. As much as I'm doing it now, it was way worse. 
before this period of self-reflection. <laughs> it's still bad, but it's worse. But I, but I do like it for that. And I do like the community angle. Like we have a private Facebook group where people genuinely help each other and like form friendships. We have one of those. Yeah, we have one of those as, yeah. as well. And it's great. That I love. It, and it's. Yeah, because there's no algorithm to it, and you know when you post, you post, right. and it's in real time, and all that other stuff, and it's great. Yep, um, that, I love that aspect of it as well, um, and I love the subgroups of it. Like I, I genuinely hang out in there more than I do on like my own personal page, because you know, look, personal pages get flooded with five thousand people, and you know, half of it's political, where it's just like, man, I don't give a shit who you voted for. I don't want to fucking hear that post on my page. You right, know? right. Like, on both sides, Republican or Democrat, I don't care. I'm just like, don't don't post that. Like, yep, yep. I would rather see your kids or you having a good time, enjoying life, and all that other shit. Is it so. Cult of the Curious? Is that yeah, your uh, page? that's the private. Yeah, the Cult of the Curious. That has been super <laughs> rewarding, and, and it's not something I I even really hardly ever post in. Um, I post very rarely in there, but it's something I promote a lot, and it's just for listeners under this thing of like, hey, if you want to make some new friends. If you want to find kind of like-minded people who like the same irreverent comedy plus learning new things that you do, here's a good place to do that. And a lot of like relationships have started in there. You know, people have started dating because of meeting there initially. And, and, and a lot of things where they're having a tough time, they post their GoFundMe or whatever, and they've gotten a lot of help. People have like, you know, helped other people move and just do all kinds of cool things from that. And and that feels really cool. But But I like that. It, you know, people aren't really talking about. They might talk about the show, but they're. But it's not a thing where I'm posting and they're commenting to the, all the things I'm. It's not mm -hmm. like me, me, me. It's just. Right. It's just. Hey, you guys find each other. You guys, you know, mm -hmm. form your own kind of friendships and things based on some of the shit I've talked about. Yeah, our group's kind of the same. As a matter of fact, uh, in September we organized a cruise and we took a couple hundred of them on a cruise. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. And speaking of that, um, one of them. You remember the the woman who was pregnant who Matt gave them a thousand bucks to name their kid Noel? Yeah. Well, the middle name. We all signed her stomach yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It turns out he may be uh, eligible for this contest I've been running. So the contest, Mr. Cummins, is that if anybody can prove that they conceived their child on a ghost bed, which is one of our sponsors, then I will give them a free ghost bed. Nice. Yeah, but we right. need video of it. We need video <laughs> of the conception. Yeah, so he he sent me a message on uh, Facebook yesterday. He was like, hey, I think I might have what you're looking for. No fucking yeah. way. Oh, my He's God. Get a video of it? We'll see. Wow, that'd be a baller move. Yeah. I, I'll give him the, the adjustable base as well yeah. uh, for him and his, his missus. Yeah. Uh, Dan, we've been huge fans of your stand-up comedy for a long, long time, man. How long have you been a stand-up comedian uh, at this point? It'll be, in a few months, it'll be 20 years since the first uh, open mic. Holy so shit. So August 2000 wow. was when I first went into a comedy club and did the open mic night. That's crazy, man. Uh, so you've been on the road all these years for 20-something for years? Yeah, so this, uh, that, that's been weird about this you know, time recently is uh, I was kind of freaking out a little bit in my brain. This I was just really moody this last weekend, and I think it's just because my routine has been messed up. Like, I like being home, mm -hmm. but I, am, I have toured uh, to some degree since really since 2001. I kind of jumped into doing, like, regional road gigs pretty early. So I've been, you know, going out of town somewhere to do gigs at, on a regular basis yeah, since uh, 2001. So it's pretty strange not to know when that's going to come back. Yeah, I, we so we host a sports show and we do the same thing. So every two weeks, we usually travel to whatever the biggest sporting event is in America. And that's been weird for me of like, oh, shit, we're home. We're not going to that thing or this yeah. thing doesn't exist. And uh, I was having a conversation with my wife this morning and she was like, I, I bitched about something around the house and she was like, well, it doesn't matter. You'll be gone anyways when this is over next month. And I was like, actually, no, they're not bringing fans back to these events for God knows yeah, how long don't at know. this point. We, we don't know. Uh, stand up comics don't know. Yep. Um, I saw Rogan had a post yesterday where he was like uh, somebody was out in, out in front of Madison Square Garden with his tour date that was going to, you know happen in well, two they, or three months they, they moved it to november 20th now but who right. knows if that'll uh, happen. and that's what he said it's he goes, him and Chappelle, right yeah it's him and Chappelle. Yeah. And he goes i don't i don't know if that's going to happen um we've gotten no word of that yep. and then even when shit comes back is it going to be people social distancing where it's like hey man the comedy clubs will be cut in half the stadiums or concerts will be cut in half and then how do you determine how close people are from each other and especially for comedy right like stand-up comedy you need in a packed 
I know. Club. Yeah, you need people to be packed in there tight. Like it, it affects things dramatic. Like it's such a fragile art form that way, where you know you tell mm -hmm. the exact same stories. You know, if you took, if you took a, it makes me think of one time I saw this. Um, somebody had taken all the the music out of Star Wars scenes. And so they had some like YouTube video. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. It was so awkward. Where it was like a YouTube video of a Harrison Ford, you know, Han Solo, like walking across this room, big dramatic scene in the movie, but they took all the dramatic mm -hmm. uh, scoring out of it. And it's just like a dude's boots on this squeaky floor. And it's fucking <laughs> awkward. It's a terrible scene. And that stand up, you take any like amazing special and remove the crowd, and it just yeah. looks like a lunatic. Well, have you seen stage. wrestling without a crowd? I yeah, I watched I watched the uh, the WWE thing the other yeah. day without no. a crowd. It's uh -huh. no, like it's dudes shouting into the stands for a reaction, which is what professional wrestlers do yeah. because it's live. It's it's basically a live fucking soap opera for lack of a better phrase, right? Um, and there's no noise. Oh, that's so and, weird. The only noise is them moving on the mat and jumping around all the yeah. time, and it's like. You close your eyes and squint hard enough, it's your parents fucking in like the 80s, and you're just like, <laughs> you know what it reminds it's me? It's awful. The one thing that I'm worried about most, and I think you brought it up before, was, is basketball because the, the court squeaking is so much. Mm -hmm. Like my, oh my, my ex girlfriend's uh, husband hated, or I'm sorry, my ex girlfriend's husband was a D1 college basketball player, so he watched it college mm -hmm. and pro constantly. They live in Minneapolis, so he went to the Minnesota games all the time. Huge basketball fan. She hates the sound. Of the of sneakers on the yeah. court, she makes it so when he watches, he watches it with the sound off. Basically, <laughs> um, that's <laughs> he can watch basketball whenever he wants. No sound, no sound, right? Yeah. But I worry about that when it comes back because if it's <sighs> is that all you're hearing, it reminds me of the Vuvuzela thing in the fucking World Cup a couple of years, a oh, couple yeah, of World yeah, Cups yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like whenever it was in uh, South Africa, it was un. You heard these horns, these loud horns. Constantly, and they were like, I, and hey, I turned, oh, I turned off yes, the sound. Yes, yes, I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yep. Constantly ah. for fucking two hours. No, I, I didn't. I watched all those games, and I didn't watch a single one with sound on. Yeah, which That's is right. Because I, I remember that. I actually it, enjoyed those. Horns. But somebody, somebody <laughs> developed an app and started charging for it. Like there was an app that you could watch it on your mobile device, your iPad or whatever the uh -huh. fuck, where it would filter that sound. Wow, it's able to but, isolate that right. frequency. So else. Yeah, so I wonder if they're going to be able to do that for the NBA. Like, our sneaker sound is going to be able to be isolated out of the mix now. They can just put some kind of ambient noise in its place. Is that it, that's going to be so Possibly. loud in an echoey, empty stadium. Yeah. Here's what they can't stop. They can't stop the NBA players from yelling the N-word at each other constantly. No. Because and, and, that yeah, happens yeah. every single game. Exactly. I don't know if you've ever been to an NBA game and you're, like, near the court at all, mm -hmm. and, like, while they're playing the game, they yell the N-word at each other a lot. Oh, a hundred times over and over yeah. and over again. Um, and a lot of profanity as well. <laughs> oh, dude, it's, it's <laughs> That is going to be hilarious if everyone can finally hear that. I would love it. It would be great. I mean, like, one of my favorite books when I was growing up was this book, and it was uh, about baseball, right? It was, like, an inside look at baseball, and it talked about – Weird conversations that first baseman would have, like Julio Franco, for example, hated playing first base. He hated it, and he would tell the runner on first base, like, "Hey, I fucking hate this. <laughs> if you make that pitcher throw over here, I'm gonna slap the fuck out of you with my mitt." Really? Ball, yes, every single time. <laughs> and every time they would do it, he would he would just come right across their helmet with the fucking ball and just crack their head. Like every single time. If you go back and watch when he played for the Rangers when he was playing a little first base, yeah, he he fucking did it all the time. Um, that's fucking I, I love that guy. little stories like that. I love shit like that. Franco, yeah, Franco played until he was like 50 years old almost. Uh, yeah. Longer than that. They <laughs> yeah. don't even know because of his birth certificate. Yeah, they, we're gonna, whenever he dies, we're going to cut him in half and count the rings and see how old he really was. <laughs> yeah, that guy was, that guy was 100 years old. Uh, going back to your Star Wars story, though, I heard one about Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That, oh. uh, I read this article, and it was on the other day, yeah. and I watched it with my kid, and I was like, oh, my God. I heard that that was originally shot intended to be shot as a drama um and that's funny the that matthew broderick was a serious actor and that's why he did the role and it was supposed to be this you know story about this kid who was confused about life yeah. and was going through high school and everything else and that's in the edits the studio had gotten in there and said look this is a comedy man and like they had to just kind of get him through it yeah so they let him do the serious shit and at the end the scoring kind of like what you yeah. said with star wars was different where they played this zanier music right, throughout right. scenes like oh yeah <laughs> right right and like when i went back and saw that having read that article about it i was like oh my god dude I, yes 
Cameron wanted to kill himself. Like he hated his oh, father. Yeah. He, he hated his dad. Sure, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He wanted to die the entire time. <laughs> Ferris just kind of seemed like a lost, confused kid that like would probably never do anything with his life. Right. Um, and uh, going through all of these characters, we were just like, oh, shit, you're right. If you would have scored that dramatically. And I know that trailer's gone around with uh, Mrs. Doubtfire scored as a horror movie. Oh, <laughs> um, I think I did see that. Was that a long time ago? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you were like, that, and that was a joke, but this <laughs> right. one wasn't. And as I went back and watched that movie, there was a lot of scenes where they're just driving. Or Remember when they go to the art museum in Ferris Bueller's Day Off and they're... You know, where they're with the little kids yeah. and everything. The guy takes his car or whatever. Yeah. And the valet takes his car and drives But it's very like serious, you know, in that art museum. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, all right, I wonder if the rest of the movie was like that. How would that have played well, what out? Did, what did he, like, why would they consider him a serious actor? I guess he was in war He games. considered himself a serious actor. Oh, but he was like so 12 that's the years difference. old. He gives a shit. Fuck him. <laughs> well, after that, because, dude, he went on and did Glory and he refused to do the sequel. So they wanted to do a sequel of Ferris Bueller's Day Funny, Off. He wanted he to like, be taken more seriously. No. Oh, I thought you, I thought yeah. you were gonna say he wanted to do a sequel for Glory. What would that be? <laughs> oh no! <Yeah>. And then, <laughs> he has a very limited they understanding back of history. To life. They're like refighting the Civil War. Right, like, right. Fuck you guys. <laughs> we're back. Although they're all dead, but yeah, yeah but they're back. But um, Biloxi Blue was too. That was a good movie. Yeah, he did a lot of serious shit, and that's kind of who he wanted to be. And I knew. I, I knew, like, as of, like, 15 years ago, 15 or 20 years ago, there was a script of a sequel that was circulating huh. Hollywood where it was, all, it was them grown up. And oh, God. They were, no he way. was working at, like, some cubicle job. Yeah. And it was, I, I read it, and it was, uh, um, he was working in, like, a cubicle, hated his life, just m- moving up the corporate ladder, and they wanted him and Cameron uh, to go and ditch work. Right. And then go out for the they day. They made that the movie. It's thing. called Office Space. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Um, but he wouldn't do it, and, and it was, was like, way no. better. Office Space is way better than this sequel that you're talking about ever could have been. Oh, Mike, Mike, oh, Mike yeah, Judge. Yeah, yeah. Office Space is a great fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great movie, great movie. But they've they've tried over the years with certain movies like that. They tried to do uh, Fletch. There was like 50 iterations of Fletch coming back, um, and at one point it was Jason Lee who was cast in it, and uh, mm. and then the kid from Dawson's Creek, um, Josh, whatever. Yes. Yeah, he was cast as Fletch, and I was like, "Man, I don't think you can do that again." You know, I can't imagine like I if if I was a young comedic actor, I wouldn't go anywhere near that. No, I'm not trying to compete with fucking Fletch. You can't. No. Yeah, not a there's no way. Like, why would you try to like become the new Fletch? Yeah, no, that'll never happen. Look, there's too much money involved now. People are just like, "Ah, eh, back up the truck, let's do it." No, but uh, well, now, even yeah. even for, even with movies and stuff, I think about how this is gonna like. Uh, when are those gonna start? going into production again like new seasons of shows they gotta they gotta lift a bunch yeah. of stuff to get things filmed again right well yeah, I mean, they're to, well behind to get, to get them filmed as well but which is going to create a gap but then uh like how much money are the studios are going to sp- spend on stuff that they expect a theatrical release for when they don't know in the theaters oh are yeah there? yeah so are, yeah. are we only going to see people making content for direct publication yeah it's it's weird wow. that you said that so there was an art- article this morning melissa yeah. mccarthy's new movie they shot a four-minute sizzle and then sold it off of that to Netflix for $20 million off of a four-minute sizzle reel. And I, the, I, you can tell that they're planning for the future just in case. Yeah. Because, again, when they do open up theaters, and they have in China. They've opened up theaters in okay. China. They said the numbers are really low. They were like, Man. the most people we've got in there is like 50. Because you have to sit six seats apart and you know do all that right. other shit. And it's like... Now that people are also conditioned to watching movies and content inside their home on their 70, 80 inch things, mm-hmm. it's going to take a lot more to get people to get out of their house and go to a Only movie. Only teenagers ah. are going to go to movie theaters. <laughs> like, literally. Maybe. Like, older people, no, we're going to stay home and drink our booze that we've already paid for. Yeah. And not pay $75 for fucking bullshit. That's sick. That's sick. When, when's the last theater. time you went, Dan? Uh,. I, I went to the movies probably, I don't know, two months ago or something. I get annoyed by people talking like that is a, a frustration. I, I, I had to stop going for a while to the movies because I did, like, yell at some people. That just because I just when you were on TRT, <laughs> what? It... <laughs> when you were on testosterone, you were just no, no. This was after that. Them. This was after that. I was still. It's just such a pet peeve. It's just so disrespectful. Just like snapped at some people, and I was like, all right, man, I chill out for a while. But uh, but I would go back. I do like um, certain kinds of films. I do like to see them in the theater. Although we do have a pretty nice little home theater now. But 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 mm-hmm. I still like the movie theater experience, um, but that's just so weird about. I wasn't even thinking about six feet apart and stuff. That mm-hmm. stuff drives me. Crazy. Like, I'm- 
one of those people that's going to necessarily like you know be running uh, down to the Capitol steps with my guns and just like protesting like shelter in place. Right. But when they start talking about like you know months from now, we got to still like at the movie theater. I mean, what we can't you know have to be six feet apart or whatever. Then I do get a little crazy in my head where I'm like, this isn't this isn't a fucking plague. Like, what is happening? Like, I, right. I know this. I know it's not just the flu, but it's also not the Black Death. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh man, I'm gonna be so fucking sad if this fall that there's well, this, there's still not like the, major sporting events and stuff with people in the stands. I mean, and I know yeah, people is, are gonna get sick, but or stand up, stand up, man. I know, I mean, yeah. dude. Your your profession, like, right? dude. It's it is best if it is packed. The reason I quit back in the day was I, you know. You do enough of these gigs and there's only 30 people, 40 people in there. You either have to love it and it is your life yeah. where you're like, fuck, man, I want to kick the shit out of it <laughs> tonight for these 40 people. Right. You know, like, yeah. And there is there's like there's a million diehards who are like that. And they they're like, oh, man, who cares? These 30 or 40 people are going to get the best goddamn show of their life tonight. Right. Or there's others where I, where like me. I was just like, man, what am I doing this for? There's 30 people out tonight. I mean, I could I could go out to a bar and tell the same jokes. Tonight. Right, right. No, um, no. That, and, and just before this happened, I was like, uh, you know, we just got into a nice spot where the clubs were packed. We were kind of like adding shows. And I was like, OK, 20 years, grinding it out, got to this point. <laughs> like it, mentally, if, if, if I have to go like to back to a world where it's like, OK, now there's 40 people in here because they all got to sit six feet away from each other. And yeah, ah, that's gonna be. I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna. Good, I gonna think. Jump back I think a lot that. of yeah. people are. I think a lot of people are gonna rebel at that idea. Probably about forty five percent, which is about how many vote for conservative politicians. Because the conservatives are. They've made a move recently. I don't know why exactly. It's maybe. The, I think everybody's just bored, to be honest. So if you see people acting crazy right now, they're probably just bored. But uh, like protesting stuff right, right. now. Right. Like, come on, man. Yeah, is that really what you got to do right now? Hey, I've, I've seen it. Cause we live in a small town here in Wilmington. Yeah, and I've seen three protests in the last three days. Yeah, there was protests um, yesterday here in uh, Coeur d'Alene. Yep, there's a bunch of people sure, downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of lot of uh, lefties in Coeur d'Alene, right? Uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> no, there's uh, I we're, we're, what we're seeing right now is a confluence between years of postification of American culture, mm -hmm. and then uh, the other part is the widespread distrust of anybody that's in power yeah whether it be the media or the government like no one trusts anybody to tell them what's actually going on anymore mm -hmm. and or they trust somebody that reposts something on facebook to tell them it's right like one of those two things right and then everybody that actually trusts what's going on they're all pussies right the only body that's still really invested in the u.s government is the left because that's what they depend on to continue pushing their message um, so those people are the ones that like 30% of them believe that you can rub fucking, uh, I don't know, like mint oil on your feet and you can cure cancer. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, uh, that those, th these groups of people, it's, it's just this weird confluence of different, different like factors, different outside stimulus that are causing everybody to be crazy. Right. Yeah. Now. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think it makes sense for a lot of people to be crazy right now because, like, everything that you're saying, you know, like, there is this distrust and stuff. And then with this issue specifically, the, you know, the the, the articles and uh, just, you know, news pundits talking about it, they have been all over the map, you know, with the information that's been given out. So it, it is a little like it's, it's almost like a weird psychological experiment where it's like who wouldn't go a little crazy after a certain while in this yeah. situation where one day you're told this, and then the next day you're told something completely mm. opposite, and then two days later, you know, I, I remember for the first two weeks of this, I was on the news all the time, being like, oh, okay, all right, this is what it looks like now. I'm talking to my wife, yeah, yeah. talking to my wife, and I, oh, okay. And the last week, I've just been like, fuck it, nobody knows anything. We're, 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 being, <laughs> we're being managed by a fucking, you know, group of clowns. Like, what the fuck is happening? Like, no one can agree I'm on anything. I'm the same, man. You hear all these numbers, and uh, some of them are inflated, some of them are deflated, mm -hmm. and you're just like... Well, if you're one of those people that doesn't, like, sit on one side or the other... Right. ...or necessarily get your news just for one place, here's the process that you've seen so far. So it's China, mm -hmm. and everything they said was bullshit. And then Europe, everything they said was uh, kind of correct, mm -hmm. but also way inflated because China didn't give good data. Then you hear from us, or from the World Health Organization... And even they back then, remember this was like, what was it February? Like the middle of February, they were criticizing the, the Trump administration for even considering 
doing travel bans and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The right. World Health Organization was yeah. doing that yeah. in mid February. That wasn't that long yeah. ago. And then, then you start hearing from the Trump administration, and it's all these sweeping measures. Then you hear about the governor shutting stuff down and blah blah blah. There's critics on both sides. Mm-hmm. People have been very critical of Trump. Then you go back, or then you get to the response to Trump's activities over the course of about two weeks, and it's mostly the left criticizing because that's what they do. Obviously, it's the, it's politics. But then these, then the rebuttal from that is videos of Nancy Pelosi walking through Chinatown in San Francisco telling people to come visit. You right. know what I mean? Right. So it's like nobody knows what the fuck is going on. <laughs> right. right. It's because very confusing. No, no, no one in power agrees, and it's gone, it's gone from, like, extreme to extreme in a very rapid amount or a very rapid period so yeah. many times. Yeah, it's interesting like, to see that. Like, po- oh, po- oh, yeah. oh, 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 you can't keep saying oh. At some <laughs> right. point, you got to fucking get up and make breakfast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I, I just want to walk out in the street. If I die, I die, and that's it. I haven't changed my life in any way, shape, or form. Like, um, I'll try not to go near old people, and that's about it. Yeah, that's it. what my wife but, and I have uh, done. Yep, with my grandparents, like, uh, in their 80s told them mm-hmm. like please stay inside we're not going to visit you for a while i personally just based on everything i've understood about it i'm not worried for me personally i'm i'm still yeah, like no, you either. know shaking people's hands when they come over and doing that kind of stuff like i'm probably washing my hands a little more but but actually not really <laughs> like maybe i was initially yeah same maybe i was initially <laughs> yeah and now i'm just like i don't know if fucking okay like, because what I think is like, yeah, this thing is is, is bad, and, and you know, it would be terrible to die of it, but it's it would be terrible to die of a whole bunch of other things that were out yeah. before this thing came around that were also uh, had a decent chance of killing me at some point. So to me, I'm like, I'm not that freaked out. Like, this is just one more in a huge litany of so many things that can kill me. That, yeah. But 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 I, other people have a very different reaction where they're just like, oh my god, and then they're reading about the death toll. I'm like. Motherfucker, cancer kills way more people every time. Like, all these other things are killing more yeah. people. Why are you fixated on this one new thing all of a sudden? It's like, unless, unless well, you- people don't understand statistics, I feel like right. that class should have been. Uh, everybody, everybody that goes to college complains about the class statistics. Clearly, no one actually paid any fucking attention. So important. Because if only seven, 60 to 70% of people are even poss- capable of being infected by this. Right. And then there's there's a maximum of about a 1.5 percent death rate. Do you understand like how how little a chance there is of you dying? Right. From this shit? And out, yeah. and out, and out of that 1.5, how many of those are like 75 and older or have compromised immune systems? It's like if you're mm-hmm. 30, yeah. 40, 50 years old and you're in good shape, the odds of this thing killing you are extremely low. It, you know, like Lo- you know. lower than getting hit by a car walking, which right. actually that number has probably gone down because there's no. Walking, I almost anymore. did uh, uh, after work the other day. I, I was walking hit by a car. I wasn't looking, and I was like, "Oh motherfucker, man!" <laughs> I was too paranoid about the the COVID thing, and I forgot about the car. What a weird stat that would be if you could somehow in a magical world track it of like people mm. on their phones, anxious about you know COVID nineteen, walking out in front of cars and getting fucking hit and killed, mm. just getting smoked. Just right getting there smoked. I was walking. I was walking my dogs yesterday down Front Street, and this uh, little bird kept trying to attack one of my dogs. Mm -hmm. But not really. It was kind of funny. I was super high. It may may not have happened. uh, (laughs) Not at all. So I'm walking the dogs, and this one bird just keeps swooping over Morty's head just repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is this bird trying to play? I figured it just had a nest somewhere nearby. It was trying to be territorial and protected. So I was watching it out of the corner of my eye, and then one time – it came off a light post and tried to swoop down there, and I just turned around and flipped it off like this, and it flew away. I feel like I have magic powers now. <laughs> Maybe. Or, you, or you're just getting really, really high. Like, mm. really, really high. Yeah, uh, were your dogs wearing masks? Uh, no, they don't wear Why would they wear masks? Eh, just be, some people are telling their pets, their pets, your pets one, can what, get it. One of Put my a favorite, mask on your pet. Oh one God. of my favorite trolls right now are people that are going out in public with the wrong kind of mask. Like one guy had just uh, like one over his eyes, <laughs> like the Phantom of the Opera style. <laughs> 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 but I, I want to get like a Gimp mask and start walking around in public with it. And then like go to the go to the register <laughs> yeah, and the lady yeah. starts asking me a question. I have to unzip it to answer. <laughs> <laughs> That. Take out the gag ball after yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. And then, then put it all back on before I leave. And Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Have a great day. Have you worn a mask at all? I haven't worn one once. Not one single uh, time. My wife shamed me at uh, Trader Joe's a while back, and, she, she, and I wasn't wearing it. She had like the little, uh, almost like a painter's mask. And I told her, I'm like, this doesn't do anything. 
And then she's like, well, the CDC said, I'm like, no, I don't care. And then we went in there and then, and then my kids, they also had theirs. And so it was like three on one where there's like dad, like everyone else has one in the store. <laughs> so I, I put it on and then went in this, and then immediately a- after we paid, I just ripped it off and just fucking crumpled up and threw it away. Like I was, yeah, like, you regretted it. I was so mad that this I was is shamed into wearing it. I haven't, I haven't heard the hippies talking about this yet, but there's going to be a ton of refuse from this whole thing. A lot of oh, n- like nitro gloves, a lot of rubber, oh yeah, plastic gloves, oh ah, yeah, that are right. just being thrown away, I and didn't then think a lot of mass that. that are being thrown away. Where are you, hippies? Aren't <laughs> the animals more important than human beings? Yeah, pick a fucking side, bitch. I mean, look, it's been years now with this shit. Pick a side. Pick a side. And if information comes out that's critical to your side, all you got to do is change your side. You that's know it. that, right? Like if all <laughs> You're of a not sudden, stuck there forever. No. Yeah, if all of a sudden things change, you can change. Right. That's possible. That is possible. That like, is possible. The Republicans used to be very uh, anti-interventionist inter- interventionist back in the day, the Monroe Doctrine. Yeah. Right? The Democrats started the Klan. I think, we, I think that one's flipped, too. So That's flipped. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, things can change is all I'm saying. Yeah, that's all we're saying. Uh, Dan, where can everybody find your uh, stand-up special? Uh, they can find it on um, you know all the audio platforms, Pandora, Spotify, all that stuff. And then uh, they can find it on video, Amazon, Cable On Demand, and, uh, and a whole bunch of other places that I saw on a spreadsheet that I don't remember. <laughs> of course. What's, what's the exact date that it comes out? Uh, the, uh, it comes out on video uh, the 28th of April, and then it comes out. It's on Pandora now, and then it comes out every other audio platform on May 1st. That's great. Uh, look, you're one of the very best doing it. Um, now's the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, Yay. which is someone Thank who's you. inspired you or helped you to become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Uh, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give it to uh, my grandpa. I'm gonna give it to uh, Papa Ward. Just a, okay. a good dude, hardworking dude. Worked at a mill. You know, was a uh, majority of his working life and spent his weekends setting up rentals. You know, building them with like 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 true like man stuff where. Uh, didn't hire somebody to help build him, like built these houses on his own, ha- you know, had, you know, hired somebody to help him for little things here and there, built like six little rentals in Riggins, Idaho, and set up a, a nice little retirement for himself, you know, and he's been playing the slot machines now at the, in, at the Indian casinos for the last 30 years and, uh, and enjoying himself after, after all that work before, but just like a good family dude and, uh, I, my work ethic and, uh, definitely comes from him and, uh. And just, and just, you know, trying to be like humble about stuff and like work hard, whatever happens from that happens and don't be a, don't be cocky. Don't be a dick. He's also very, you know, uh, kind of middle of the road guy when it comes to politics and stuff. And, you know, just seems to, I don't know, think for himself. I don't know. I, I could go on and on, uh, but, uh, but my grandpa Ward, awesome, awesome dude. That's awesome, man. By Cheers. the way, if you've Cheers. got a, uh, if you're, if you're in our age group, by the way, uh, you've got a point zero zero zero. Two percent chance of dying from COVID. No shit. Oh my god, that low. Yeah. So Look get fucked with this <laughs> bullshit, dude. I'm gonna cough right in your fucking face. <laughs> Alec. Uh, thank you guys. Yeah, yeah man. man. Thank you for coming it's, on. It's always a pleasure. You're one of the best to do it. If you haven't heard uh, "Time Suck" uh, with Dan Cummins, it's it's dude. You have one of the best podcasts on the planet. Oh, thanks, man. man. It's been it's so it's been a nice intricate escape. and well researched and. Uh, Man, it's it's just a fucking blast, man. You feel like you're getting a just a nugget of joy once a week um, out of there. And then your new show with your wife is uh, Scared to Death. Yes, yeah, you guys to death have a great fun. rapport on there. Yeah, you guys have a great rapport. She's great at it. So please tell her we said hello. Oh, I will. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I love the uh, the sets looking better and better. You got you got more stuff uh, mm-hmm. than, than you had. I think uh, last. I know last time you came to the hotel, but when I was checking stuff out, you got yeah. you got more doodads around. It's more sponsors. Sweet. More yeah, sponsors. We've got and some I'm just wrestlers. Lazy. We've got OJ. Yeah, we, pretty get, much, we get a bunch. Pretty much all you we need. We actually have a signed Fletch. We get a signed Fletch up. Oh yeah, we do have a Fletch right behind me. Right yeah, here. signed, signed by Mister Chevy Chase himself. Yeah. Um, thanks for being here, dude. Uh, for Dan Cummins, Dan Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.